Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland, and I'm Bill Stone. Well, yesterday during a House Finance Committee meeting, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, hereafter referred to and always on this show as Red Cortez because it fits, went into a full-blown meltdown after her stupid Green New Deal went down in flames in the U.S. Senate. She completely flipped out. You know, so let's actually watch a, car, a uh, video of that because this is pure Internet gold. You want to tell people that their concern and their desire for clean air and clean water is elitist? Tell that to the kids in the South Bronx, which are suffering from the highest rates of childhood asthma in the country. Tell that to the families in Flint, whose kids, have their blood is ascending in, in lead levels. Their brains are damaged for the rest of their lives. Call them elitist. Tell, you're telling them that those kids are trying to get on a plane to Davos? People are dying. They are dying, and the response across the other side of the aisle is to introduce an amendment five minutes before a hearing and a markup. This is serious. This should not be a partisan issue. This is about our constituents and all of our lives. Iowa, Nebraska, broad swaths, swaths of the Midwest are drowning right now underwater. Farms, towns that will never be recovered and never come back. And we're here. and. Now, I have to tell you, when I first heard this idiot, I was actually kind of pissed off. You see, I live in Lincoln, Nebraska, one of the places that she says is covered by large swaths of water. Uh, it's a city of about 250,000, and uh, there hasn't been that much flooding in my area. You have to understand that it's not flooding in large swaths. It's flooding around, like, creeks uh, rivers, anything that is a tributary of the Missouri River and the Missouri River itself. What you're talking about there is a few miles worth of flooding on the sides. It's not giant swaths of Omaha, of Iowa or Nebraska, which are large states. You know, if you looked at it from a satellite, you probably wouldn't notice the difference. You know, Missouri River is a big, long river. It feeds into the Mississippi. And the flooding's bad, but it's not... <laughs> It's not all over the state. And while it hasn't really hit me, it has hit Omaha, which is a metro area of about a million people. And it's about half an hour away from me. It's home to Offutt Air Force Base, which during the Cold War was Strategic Air Command. And it's flooding the Missouri River. In fact, what you see behind me here is Offutt Air Force Base. Uh, I don't know if it's at this point of the flooding because water goes up and then as it, you know, it, it recedes down again. But this is what Alpha looked like at some point when it was pretty badly flooded. And uh, you can't see much of Omaha here. Um, what you're seeing anywhere you see a tree, frankly, is somebody's house. Um, this is a natural prairie, but people like to build, you know, have houses with trees in their yards. So these are all planted trees that you see behind me. And what you're seeing is basically Omaha suburbs. The majority of the city is off that direction and, you know, all the tall buildings and stuff like that. So when I first heard her going off, I thought she was just being insulting. You know, she was saying that we were so inept that we would never recover from these floods because this kind of flooding isn't all that unusual. The very similar extreme flooding occurred in 2010 in roughly the exact same places. Now, did some poor souls die and have some died in this one? Sadly, yes. And did some towns get flooded? Yes. Um, did the entire Missouri coast of Omaha, again, a city of a million people, get flooded? Did office, off at Air Force Base get flooded? Yes. But did we lose our towns? No. <laughs> did Omaha rebound from the hundreds of millions of dollars in damages in 2010, just like there's going to be this year? Yes. Did off at Air Force Base continue to patrol the skies? Yes. And, you know, furthermore, this sort of flooding, again, is not that unusual. It happens from time to time because our waterways, our creeks, rivers, etc., everything north of Kansas City all feeds into the Missouri River, and eventually goes downstream and eventually hits the Mississippi River. And when there's a bad winter, it melts and you get flooding. And this was a really bad winter. There's a lot of snow this winter here. So we knew it was going to flood. 
and we prepared as best we could. And when it happened and people needed help like they do now, well, we rolled up our sleeves and we got together helping each other. And there's been worse flooding. You know, in the 20th century, the Army Corps of Engineers repeatedly restructured the Missouri River to reduce damage caused by flooding. Um, the Corps, in fact, has now done it so many times that there are actually disputes along the South Dakota and Nebraska border as to which piece of land belongs to which state. You know, the Missouri River has traditionally been the border between those two states, but with all the restructuring, well, now there's disputes and claims about whether one piece is in Iowa, I'm sorry, in South Dakota, which, whether it's in Nebraska and so forth. So that's, always, that's been ongoing for decades. If you want to see some of this, um, examples of this in action, this is Sioux City in both pictures. Now, this picture here is 1909 when they had a flood. Much smaller city than it is now, but they still had a lot of flooding. This picture over here was the flooding in 2010. And Sioux City now is about a city of about 100,000. Uh, and again, we're looking at two pictures that are 101 years apart, but we still see the same flooding. We have seen this type of flooding ever since white settlers began even keeping records of it. And that started with the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1804. And no doubt it flooded when the Lakota and Dakota natives were ruling the plains. This is just one of those dangers of living near, you know, a large body of water and when you have, you can get bad snow in the wintertime. It's like earthquakes in California or hurricanes in Florida. It's just, you know, a danger you have to live with. So I was going, what, 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 what's going on in Red Cortez's brain? I mean, does she actually think that we're so totally helpless that despite centuries of known flooding that we weren't going to come back from this one? Well, then it hit me. It was like, oh, 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 okay. Red Cortez actually believes the world is going to end in 12 years. She doesn't know that this kind of area floods when you have a really bad winter. She thinks this is going to be permanent. She sees this as a sign of the coming carbon apocalypse. I mean, she's not being insulting, not really. She's ignorant, but she's not being insulting. She just thinks that this is totally unique and a sign that the world is coming to an end. <laughs> you know, I generally assume that she was just the usual power-mad sociopathic narcissist who infests all of our halls of government at every level. But now I know that she's not just a communist and not just a power mad sociopathic narcissist. She's also an outright mad woman or madman. Mad. It's, she's crazy. New York's 14th district, let me talk to you for a second. You sent a mad woman to Congress, okay? You need a recall vote right, right now because this woman is insane. And the Democratic Party, you now have an honest-to-God madwoman in your midst. I mean, you're all power-mad sociopathic narcissists, I get that. But this woman is legitimately insane. <laughs> so while you're waiting for New York's 14th District to, for the recall vote, you need to dump her off of all of her committees, tell the press that they cannot interview her, and then shove her in a closet in her office, nail it shut, and feed her through a food slot a couple of times a day with federal marshals standing outside the doors to make sure she doesn't escape because she's nuts. <laughs> so that's uh, all I have to say about that subject for today. Uh, it was short and sweet, but really all you need to know is Red Cortez is a mad woman. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. And if you like what I'm doing, please do like, sub, hit the notification bell. Tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. And I'd certainly appreciate your support, either via a subscribe star or PayPal tip jar or a link on my website where you can support me further if you want to. And there's links to all of that in the description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. And remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch. News and commentary from the heartland. And I'm Bill Stone. <laughs> Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.